Today I'd like to talk about uh, Praying Advent, a series of reflections in terms of how we can be more prayerful in terms of Advent, <clears throat> how we can engage with Jesus as we journey through our Advent time. Advent, a time of anticipation, a time of hope, and I think a good way to journey in Advent is to take some time with the scriptures of Advent. So today, I'd like to share a reading from Matthew 9, uh, uh, 35 to 10, 1, uh, and a few verses after that, just to kind of share a little bit about what Jesus wants to feed us and nourish us with as we spend some time prayerfully reflecting on what Advent is all about, what it means to us personally. So I'd like to share the scripture, share some thoughts about it, and then spend some time, a short time, in prayer together. A prayer that this Advent echoes in our heart the message that Jesus wants us to receive in this special time. So a reading from Matthew. Jesus went around all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. The sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. They said to his disciples, <coughs> The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Then he summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. So we see Jesus in this reading engaging in a ministry of curing, which immediately tells us a lot about Jesus. What does Jesus want to do? He wants to help cure, make people whole. So in this Advent time, what are the things within us that need a healing? What is the cure that we desire from Jesus? We know that Jesus loves us, that Jesus wants to cure us, that Jesus wants to heal us. So let us reflect on those things within us. Maybe there are some concerns that we've had lately. Maybe some upsetments, some worries, a family member, someone we know from work, someone we've met in the community, someone in our church community. A healing, a curing. What needs to be healed within us? Jesus looks out at this crowd that is gathered uh, after he's done these healings. And he looks at this crowd and he is moved with pity. Again, this shows us a lot about Jesus. Jesus is a person of love. He is concerned for us. He has a pity for us, a concern for us. And it says what was moved was not his head. He wasn't analyzing the situation. But his heart, his emotion, his feeling, he felt for people. And when he looked out, he saw that they were two things. They were troubled, but also abandoned. They were troubled. They had concerns. They had worries. How am I going to feed my family? Are my children okay? What about my wife? What about my parents? All of these troubles, troubles in life that we face every single day, concerns, gun violence, crime. We face these concerns. 
feeding those that are hungry, peace in our world. We face troubles, concerns, the environment, all these concerns. But not only were the people troubled, they were abandoned. They felt like they had no one to lead them, to help them. When he looked out at them, he said, these are people that they seem abandoned. And he uses the phrase, they were like sheep without a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Just imagine. Imagine a sheep without a shepherd. Oh my goodness. Crazy, right? What is that sheep going to do? Where is the sheep going to go? Who's going to feed the sheep? Who's going to give the sheep some water? Who's going to take care of that sheep? The sheep has no shepherd. There is a need here for leadership, for someone to help the people, to give them guidance. And then Jesus points out that the harvest is abundant. Look at all these people. There's a harvest out here. These people want help. They want leadership. But the laborers are few. Where are the laborers? Where are the people who are going to help them? They're not around. We look in our own day at the troubles and we say, are there laborers? Are there people willing to help, to care for others, to not just be concerned about themselves and their own needs, but to think of other people and how these people can be helped? as we look at their needs. And what will these laborers do? They will cure. They are to be healers. And who do they go out to? They go out to the lost sheep, to those who have lost their way, to those on the margins, to those that other people maybe neglect and don't care about, those that are lonely. Those are the ones they go out to. And Jesus says it to them. He says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This kingdom is here. It's right now. It's not in the future. It's not in the past. It's at hand. It's right now. And that when we give, we should always give without cost. Because we have been given to freely by God. God has given us many gifts. We don't pay for those gifts. Those gifts come to us from God, from Jesus. So because we've been given, we give back without cost. So in our Advent journey, Jesus is calling us to healing, to curing, to healing ourselves personally. Jesus will heal us. And then to share that healing with other people. So let us pray now in this Advent time for the gift of healing or curing. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this special season of Advent, and we thank you, Jesus, for the many ways that you cure us. Help us, Lord, to accept your healing, to accept you as our shepherd. Let us turn to you, Lord, for your strength, for your direction. When we receive that strength, help us to share it with others freely and without cost, because we know how much you love us and want to guide us. And we ask this, Jesus, during this Advent, in your name, amen. Have a wonderful Advent. God bless.